Hi, what I'd like to uh, explain to you today is how, what is an HDMI switcher, how to use it, and be careful of some junk products out there that are just a waste of money and they will fail within a few weeks. The product I'm reviewing today is the Taiwanese A10 HDMI switcher. It's very good. Okay, let me say it this way. Many of you will have uh, a computer, uh, a game console, PlayStation, and uh, maybe a camera or some other uh, device that has a video output. And every time you want to see it on the large screen, you have to switch your cable. You have to unplug the HDMI input to your TV screen and plug in the laptop uh, uh, screen or the Xbox or PlayStation screen so you can play the game or switch to your camera. So that will eventually ensure that your TV screen HDMI connector wears out and cannot be used. So the safest approach is to use an HDMI switcher so you don't have to swap cables. So for example, in my case, I've got my Acer Nitro 5 plugged into the HDMI switcher, my old 10 year old Samsung laptop plugged into my HDMI switcher, my Sony camera. When I'm making videos, I'd like to see what whether I'm in focus or what is the background and all that and whether there is good shadow or, or what, whatever because the, t the camera screen is very tiny. You can't see all this. And if I had a game console, I would have plugged it in so that I can watch everything on my 42 inch screen. The advantage of uh, using the TV 42 inch screen is that I don't have to strain my eyes looking directly at a 14 inch or 17 inch uh, laptop screen. So this makes it really wonderful. That is the whole idea behind HDMI switcher. And your cables are permanently fixed. You don't have to unplug and plug, unplug and plug. And there is a remote for you to switch or there is a manual switch for you to switch which uh, device you want to watch. This is the A10 HDMI switcher I was talking about. There are four HDMI inputs. One, two, three. And four. The HDMI output is here. This is the socket for the 5 volt supply connector. And we have a remote. So you press one, two, three, four, whichever channel you want to watch, from which of these inputs you want to watch. This is the remote sensor. You can either use a remote or switch channels by pressing on any of these four buttons. This is channel one, two, three, and four. On the back, you can see it's designed in Taiwan and Canada. And it is far superior to some of the rubbish I've seen in the shops. And it is reliable and lasts. The nice thing about this is that if you don't have your power supply switched on and plugged in, it won't show you anything on the TV screen. Not bad, huh? Pretty good and quite heavy. Feels like a solid piece of equipment. So let's connect it and let me show you how it works. My camera video output is directly connected to the TV screen. So I can't show you the HDMI switcher connection to the TV screen. This is the HDMI output and my TV screen will be plugged into this, which I will plug into the TV screen. This cable is from my 10 year old Samsung laptop and it is connected to the HDMI switcher input one. This cable comes from my Acer Nitro 5 laptop HDMI output and it is connected to the HDMI switcher input three. My camera will normally go into HDMI input two. I am only using three of them. I am not using the fourth input because I'm waiting for when I build the next computer and then I will connect it to the fourth input. That is the reason why I needed four inputs HDMI switcher to connect to my large screen TV. It's a 42 inch screen, so it's very convenient. I can place the TV screen a little bit further away and have a clear view of what's going on on my screen. Let's check out the switching. Let's switch to the camera's view. 
it does take a few seconds to switch, but that is not a real problem. My TV screen shows what the camera is seeing. Now let us switch to my Acer Nitro 5 laptop to see what is showing. Now let us see what my old Samsung laptop is showing on its screen. This was a really bad product. Each of the HDMI input contacts failed after a few days of use. I moved from one connector to another to another until all four or five of them stopped working. Before it failed, you could see a lot of snow on the screen. That is a clear indication that the device was failing. The worst thing is I think it spoiled my HDMI 1 TV input. It's gone. It's a blank screen when I use that HDMI 1 input on my TV screen. Hey, don't be surprised. Huh? There are a lot of HDMI switches, cheap stuff that are flooding the market and they will not last even a month. So do be careful what you pick and choose. The moment you see one input or one output having a contact problem or it's not stopped working, you know, I tell you within 30 days, the whole device is going to fail. Don't ever think that you can get away with it by not using one particular input. Do be careful huh, when you buy all this uh, low quality cheap stuff because when it fails, chances are they cannot be repaired for a very simple reason i mean a lot of products coming out from china there's no warranty there's no guarantee there is no repair service you spend your money and you take the risk but i tell you what is really bad your supplier in whatever country you are living in who is importing the device will give you a seven day or a a uh, one month warranty if it fails within seven days you will replace it or you can change it for something else but i tell you some of these devices will exceed that short-term warranty period simply because they are low quality cheap design they are made cheap so that they can sell lots of it and the danger about making them cheap is when it fails it cannot be repaired right they will tell you we will repair it for you and return it, give it to you because they don't want to refund your money. But what happens is, let's say the transistor NB1234 is uh, failed. It's a low quality, uh, I mean, I, I don't know whether there's such a transistor, but I'm just giving you an example. It's a low quality device, cheap device. So if it's not stressed, it will last a bit longer. But if the surrounding circuitry around it is stressing the device, the transistor, it will fail or the the transistor is badly manufactured and it will fail it's a reject that they have sold it into your motherboard circuit and uh, shipped it off to you because you don't know what they are getting right you don't understand the electronics so what happens is when that happens they send take it send it back to the repair people the repair technicians what the repair technicians is going to do is take it out, take the NB1234 transistor out and put in another NB1234 transistor and then ship it to you and say, oh, it's repaired. It should work without any problems. Actually, within a few days, it will fail because it's a cheap transistor that cannot work. It's unreliable transistor. All the circuit around it is giving so much stress to the transistor that it will keep failing eventually it will keep failing. you run it for another two or three days or three months or four months it will fail right so it is not worth repairing such devices throw them in the bin don't waste your money buying them in the first place buy something that is reliable and of good quality that will last you a few years you won't have wasted your money. I hope you have learned a lot from this and I hope you have understood how HDMI switches work. Do get the good quality stuff. They will last you years. The long-term cost saving is a lot. So there will be some more videos like this coming out. Subscribe and you will find out more information.